Hi, I'm Elaine and I'm working on the Irish Hedgehog Survey. Now a lot of people get in touch uh, when they find that they have a hedgehog in their garden and they want to know if their hedgehog is okay or you know when a hedgehog might be sick, how do they get help for that animal. So I'm here today with Bev from the Hogsprickle a hedgehog rescue in County Clare and Bev is a registered veterinary nurse and she is certified by the department to look after sick and injured animals. So I am going to ask Bev some of your questions here today. So Bev, thanks so much for agreeing to have us here uh, to You're answer welcome. the questions. Mm -hmm. So people sometimes they find a hedgehog in their garden and, and people think is this okay? Are they well? Are they unwell? So first of all, a happy healthy hedgehog in a garden, what does that look like? Okay, so sometimes you would see them early evening, sometimes you would see them early morning. But if they're happy, healthy, just going about their own business and moving with purpose, that would be the main thing to have a look at. If they're walking, sometimes there's a lot of pregnant females around just now, so sometimes she would be gathering up nesting material. You might see her during the day foraging just because she needs those extra calories for the hoglets. I wouldn't be too worried about that, but of course you can phone us for a wee bit of advice. Um, and if you could send us a video or a wee, you know, a wee snapshot of what she's doing, we can normally tell then whether she's going to need help or he's going to, you know, just be left alone. Okay, so most of the time they'd be coming out at night, but the odd time if you see them during the day, as long as they're moving and, and busy, yeah. they're okay. They're oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That's, that's good to know. The problem um, is if they're not moving okay, um, a lot of people would maybe phone me and say, I've got a hedgehog sunbathing in the garden. They're nocturnal animals, they don't sunbathe. So if you've got a hedgehog that's just lying out in full sun, or there's a lot of flies around him, or perhaps he's been dug up by a dog, that, that happens a lot. Dogs find hedgehog nests and dig them out. Um, that would be cause for concern, so we would probably bring them into care. A lot of the times they would only spend two or three days here, um, just so that I can check them and observe them and make sure they're well, and then they're released straight back to where they were found. It's pretty important that hedgehogs go back to their own environment. Obviously, a few hedgehogs have had to be released in safe areas because they can't go back to that environment because of dog danger or traffic danger or building works going on or habitat destruction. So that would be a cause for concern as well. Okay, so any signs that the hedgehog is not feeling well, yeah. it's best then to get in touch. Or if it's an unsafe environment, it's best to get in touch then yeah. and get some advice from a, a hedgehog expert. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and what about baby hedgehogs? People sometimes get on to me and they say, I found baby hedgehogs in my garden. How do we know if a baby hedgehog is, is just a small hedgehog or if it's, <laughs> if it's maybe an orphan or it's, it's lost? How, what's a good idea there to give us an indication? Okay, so this time of the year there's a lot of pregnant females around, so they start to sort of give birth the beginning of May and then during May. The hedgehogs are born, I call them nail brushes because they're, they're sort of like tiny. Mum would have a nest built and she would be nesting on them and they feed them during the day, which is when a lot of people would be active in the garden, they would be clearing sheds. You find a lot of hedgehogs nesting under sheds. Um, they would be under hedges. Um, so when people are mowing the grass and shoving the lawnmower under the hedge, they might hit a hedgehog. The most important thing I would say to people is if you disturb a, a sow with hoglets um, is to cover her back over immediately and phone us as a matter of urgency. Mama hedgehogs are not that ma maternal. Um, they would leg it and abandon their babies um, and they need to come into care then. And hand rearing hoglets is a full-time job, you know. Um, you would be feeding them during the night as well as during the day. Mum would come back and feed them during the night, so we need to keep it as natural as possible. But yeah, if you disturb a mama with her hoglets this time of the year, she's just going to leg it. So I would have a few to hand rear during the, the year, so okay. yeah, phone us immediately. That's, that's good information and, and that is a, brings up another question that people often ask. Um, a lot of people think it would, be, um, it would be nice and they would like to maybe look after mm -hmm. a sick or an injured hedgehog or an orphan baby hedgehog and to rear it themselves and to look after it themselves and, and I can understand they're gorgeous, why wouldn't you want to? <laughs> yeah. But what would you say for people who would like to look after or maybe um, nurse a hedgehog themselves at home? So first of all it's illegal 
I'm a licensed wildlife rehabilitator, so I'm covered by my National Parks and Wildlife license to have them here. They can be quite difficult. I've had hedgehogs brought to me that people have tried to feed broccoli and bananas and fruit too. Um, they don't digest plant material very well at all. It makes them feel full, um, but they're not getting the proper nutrition that they have. Hedgehogs are classed as insectivorous, so a large part of their diet is worms and beetles and insects that you would find in the garden. They will eat slugs and snails, but unfortunately that would also infect them a lungworm as well. We're in our little unit, this is our small ICU unit and I've got the big recovery unit next door. Um, they're all kept very, very quiet, none of them are in the house. These are wild animals. Um, they stink. So having them in the house might be a bit stinky. Um, you can't cuddle a hedgehog, handling them stresses them out and like I say they are nocturnal so you know, if you've got them and they've got them in during the day, it's just going to stress them out way too bad. So um, I would say to anybody that wants a, a hedgehog as a pet, the African pygmy hedgehogs, you can have as pets, that's legal. These animals are covered by legislation and it's illegal to have them as a pet. So hedgehogs in the UK are vulnerable to extinction. They're on the watch list now, um, habitat destruction. Um, and a load of other sort of variables um, have put their numbers are decreasing at an alarming rate. We're not quite sure here in Ireland how their numbers are doing, um, but hopefully with the Irish Garden Hedgehog Survey, we're going to get a much, much better idea. But it, it's, it's important that people realise um, and recognise that these animals are protected by law in Ireland and um, they really should be in the care of an experienced, knowledgeable, licensed wildlife rehabber. And our goal is to get as many of these animals healthy and released back to the wild again. Having a wild animal as a pet or a disabled wild animal in captivity for the rest of its life is just not something that I, I would be comfortable with. Okay, that's good advice. So they're, they're hard to look after yeah. and they're smelly and most importantly, it's against the law. So if you have a notion that you'd like to nurse baby hedgehogs, it really is something that you should, um, you should pass on to the, the professionals. It's not recommended, they're not pets. Okay, and then Bev, so if you've discovered you got hedgehogs in your garden, they're not <laughs> sick and they're not, uh, you know, they're not orphaned or they don't need help, uh, you know, they're well. What, do you have any suggestions then for things that people can do to make their garden a bit more attractive for hedgehogs or a bit yeah. safer or you know how they might get more a lot of people are very keen to keep an eye on the hedgehogs yeah. in their garden so how, how can we uh, how can we encourage hedgehogs okay so the one thing that I would say is um, don't get active in the garden do you know just stop mowing the lawn and stop putting down plastic grass and the plastic grass is, is it's difficult, hedgehogs can't dig through it so they can't get their um, their worms and their beetles that they would be digging up. Um, the other thing is just let areas of the garden grow wild. Um, I have this thing, leave a metre margin around the garden. So even if, if you've got a, a smaller area of the garden that you want nice and neat, you're, in, you're increasing the pollinators, you're increasing the insects coming in. So if you can increase a kind of wild area or an, a more natural area, it's going to bring the insects in and that'll bring the birds in, etc. That in turn with the insects being increased in the garden would bring the hedgehogs in as well. You can leave things like log piles, just put a whole load of logs in the corner of the garden and forget about it, let it rot down. You're gonna get the insects in the log piles. You can, maybe you might find a few lizards in there, the Irish lizards. Some people have sent me pictures of newts in the log piles and in the damp areas and the hedgehogs would be like in there and they eat small uh, froglets as well. So frogs would have their frog spawn in the, the ponds or in the, the wet areas in and around but the frogs leave them and then they live in the long grass they live in the damp grass it would also help the fledglings as well because the fledglings at this time of the year they're leaving the nest they're fledging the nest and these little birds need shelter to hide from predators like cats so if you've got long grass or you've got nice hedges, these fledglings can hide in there. Mum and dad will be coming down to feed them. And then a the couple of days after they've left the nest, then that's when they're getting strong and they're starting to fly again. So 
I think I would just be encouraging people not to be as active in the garden. Okay, yeah, well, it sounds like that gardening for hedgehogs is gardening for all animals and for, Absolutely. you know, it, yeah. will, it will attract, uh, you know, everything from the, the creepy crawlies and the bugs and, and the insects up and it will help the birds and it will help the lizards and the amphibians and, and yeah. the mammals and that, that is wonderful. So aside from that, maybe a lot of people might have maybe small gardens or they, you know, they wouldn't have huge extensive areas. Um, Sometimes people might, is there, is there any food or anything that people could, put, would it be okay to put food out for hedgehogs? Yes, it would do. And I think um, it can be quite important this time of the year when there's hoglets being born, mum just needs a wee bit extra. Um, so you would be supplementing the wild diet and you can use cat food or dog food for that. A pouch of cat food with maybe a handful of kitten biscuits. The dried food helps their teeth because they, they, they can get quite bad tartar because hedgehogs don't brush. <laughs> so the dry food would um, help. We've got a couple of examples here um, that the hedgehogs can use as a feeding station. So the hedgehogs would come up here and you would put your food in here. It's, um, it doesn't have a bottom on it. Hedgehogs tend to poo and pee when they eat. They, they are the messiest. Nice. Um, so they would come in here, they would have a wee bit of food and then they would go back out again. And this part here stops any of the cats from being able to get into the food as well. And it's quite heavy. You could even put a big stone on top to make it even heavier so the foxes don't uh, flip it over. Um, and then you can just move that around the garden, you know. Um, it's probably useful to feed them at the same time every night so say you go out at nine o'clock or ten o'clock you put your hedgehog food down in the same place um, and the hedgehogs get to know that that's where it is um, this one's a pretty good one as well it doesn't have the tunnel on it so i think sometimes this kind of one might the hedgehogs might use that as a nest yeah nice. so yeah so they would take it in and they would probably sleep in it but yeah just just supplementing them with cat food um, not the fish flavor it tends to give them a wee bit of tummy upsets yeah, fish is not much on, it wouldn't feature much on a hedgehog <laughs> diet, okay. No. Or gravy, they much prefer, well, I much prefer because I have to clean them out, but I much prefer the cat food and jelly. Jelly, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, so we can feed them. We can make, if uh, if you want to make a little feeding station where mm -hmm. that they can they can go in and the food will be safe from other animals. And we can make, you can, well, you can buy, I'm very lazy, or you, yeah. can, <laughs> you can make a little nest box. And whereabouts in the garden, if you were going to make or buy a little, nest box for hedgehogs, whereabouts would be a good spot to put it? You would really need to put it beside a wild area, you would need to put it in sort of long grass and up beside um, a hedge, if you've got a hedge. Um, there's a hashtag on social media, hedges and holes, not fences and walls, because we need the hedgehogs to be able to go from garden to garden. So if you're planting hedges, you're increasing the biodiversity. So native hedges would let the birds nest in it um, if they would be attracting insects so the birds could eat the insects. But the hedgehogs, they're called hedgehogs because they need hedges. They navigate through hedges and they navigate in hedges in the countryside. So, you know, if people are taking hedges down and building walls, that's, decreasing vastly the amount of biodiversity that we've got. And if you don't have a hole in the fence or the wall, hedgehogs can't have a hedgehog highway from garden to garden. In Scotland, you can actually buy keystones for the bottom of the wall and they've, they've got hedgehog holes already built into them. So I, I'd like to encourage the the fencing uh, manufacturers, please, can you just do me a favour? Can you just give people the option of putting a hedgehog hole at the bottom of the fences that you're selling? It only has to be 13 centimetres. You know, it's not big. You know, your dogs aren't going to get through it, but it's enough to let the hedgehogs go. Um, so the fen if you've got fences, just knock a hole in the bottom. Just a little hole, so about 13 yeah. centimetres. 13 by 13, so just bigger than a CD, basically. Yeah, a hole, just, just, a, just a little bit bigger than a CD in the bottom of your, your gate or your fence or yeah. your wall, and that will, will let that the hedgehogs move around, because they do need quite a big area to, to forage in. They kind of do. And I made little arches to put against the hole, and it, it had the Hogsbrickle Wildlife he he uh, Highway on it. And it, it makes it look good. And a few of the kids that I was working with in one of the schools, um, they made them, but it was like a fairy door, but it was a hedgehog door. Oh, and they were so, so sweet. That would be a really nice project for people to do at home. Yeah. 
Okay, so finally then, Beth, thank you for all this <laughs> super information. If people see a hedgehog in the garden and they're worried or they would like to get some advice if the hedgehog is okay, who should they contact? They can contact the Hogsbrickle anytime. My phone's never off. Um, if I'm juggling hedgehogs or feeding or cleaning or I'm at the vets, we had two operations yesterday, um, they can just give me a quick text or they can WhatsApp me. If they're worried about a hedgehog in the garden, um, take a short video and WhatsApp me the short video and I'll be able to see straight away if there's a problem or not and then I can give advice. So the Hogsbrickle, um, I mean I've been doing rescuing hedgehogs for over 18 years in Ireland and then as a, you know, in Scotland. Um, as a veterinary nurse and a wildlife ranger there. So I've got, I'm not going to tell you how many years I've been doing it. <laughs> many, many years. Um, so you can phone the Hogsbrickle. You can also phone um, HRD Hedgehog Rescue Dublin up in Dublin. Um, and Yvonne is dedicated for, to hedgehogs as well. So there's the two of us uh, covering hedgehogs in Ireland. Um, if you can't get us, the WRI, the Wildlife Rehabilitation Ireland, they have a dedicated wildlife helpline. So you can phone the helpline and the girls on the helpline there would um, send you to whoever they need. So depending where you are in Ireland, but we've got volunteers all over Ireland. I mean, I cover from Tipperary down to Kerry and across the country as well. So no matter where you are in Ireland, just we've got the volunteers, we've got trained volunteers, we've got trained transporters. So we would have first responders that would get the casualties and then bring it to us and or the hospital or uh, Yvonne. So you're not stuck for help. Okay, so yeah, I'll have the, the details there. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Bev. Uh, that, was, that was wonderful and such a great help, I think. And also, I will just uh, add in that we have recently just produced a leaflet called Helping Hedgehogs, and that has got lots of tips and advice and information for people on how to make your garden a haven for wildlife. And you can download that from the irishhedgehogsurvey.com website. If you're interested in taking part in the Irish Hedgehog Survey, you'll find information about that there too. And you will also find it on the Galway County Council website. So there's loads of tips and advice there for how you can help hedgehogs and turn your garden into a hedgehog haven.